on, Jackson. Keep going. Keep going. It's a beautiful warm day at the Bennett home, and 21-month-old Jackson is playing with mom and his sisters, Kyla and Lily, in their family pool. Surrounded by family, wearing a flotation device, and being encouraged to jump into his mom's safe arms, nothing could go wrong. Come over by himself. Come on, Jackson. Look at you kick. Oh, it's a good boy, good kicker. However, two days after this video was shot, Jackson found his way back out to this pool <laughs> without mom, sisters, or his water wings. Come on, watch out! Watch out! It is a day Jenny and her family relive over and over. It was an early evening and she and her children had just returned home from picking up husband and dad, Adam, from work. Adam warmed up his dinner and Jenny went into the bedroom for a few minutes before starting the hectic night routine of baths with the kids. I came out of the bedroom and didn't see Jackson with my husband. He was sitting on the couch. So I asked him, where's Jackson? And he's like, oh, he's upstairs playing with the girls. So that, that calmed me down for about a minute and I went back into the bedroom. I got a very uneasy feeling. Something was yelling at me inside to go find Jackson now. So I, I went back outside to my husband and asked him, where's Jackson? And we yelled upstairs to the girls, hey, is, is Jackson up there with you? And Kyla yelled back, no. And that's when I realized that I had left the dog door open and I immediately ran outside and found him floating uh, face down in the pool. In the commotion of coming home, she simply had forgotten about the dog door being open and Adam mistakenly thought he saw Jackson go upstairs with his sisters as he typically would. I actually jumped into the pool and pulled him out and um, yelled to my husband to call 911 and I started CPR. I started chest compressions right away. I, I just knew that we had lost him. His skin was still warm and his lips were pink. And I was hopeful that we had found him in time since it had only been a few minutes. As an emergency room nurse, Jenny knew what to do. Jackson's pulse returned and he was flown to a children's hospital. But their hopes for his recovery were soon shattered. After four days, of testing and monitoring him, um, he was declared brain dead. We had decided that we didn't want this to be the end of his story, and um, we wanted to donate his organs to people in need. That gave us three extra days to spend with him. Jenny and Adam let Jackson go in that hospital but his heart, liver, and both kidneys remain here on this earth, giving life to four others, including a seven-month-old boy who now has Jackson's heart. Some solace for a family whose hearts were now broken. Jenny says as she mourned the loss of Jackson, she found herself also wracked with guilt and shame. I was very ashamed that I had lost my child to something preventable. Um, I was one of those people that felt like, well, this will never happen to me. I'm a good parent. I watch my children and I do things to keep them safe. After some time, she did come to realize she was not alone. Over the course of the last two years, I've met a lot of parents who have lost their children to drowning, and they all have very similar stories to mine, especially with the young children, that um, toddlers are mischievous and they will wander off. And you really hope that it's something that they're getting into your makeup or drawing on the wall with a crayon for that few minutes that you don't see them, but um, you'll find them in a, a dangerous situation such as this. And that seems to be the case for a lot of these parents that I had spoken to. That is when she decided to start the conversation early on with parents about the dangers of pools, boats, lakes, streams, even bathtubs. Drowning is the leading cause of accidental death in young children, happens to healthy children. And we're not talking about it at pediatricians' offices. She started a local chapter of Parents Preventing Childhood Drowning in her Texas community. We have 16 organizations who have teamed up with us. We're trying to create a national message to make all of our voices louder and clearer so we can um, reach pediatricians and reach others to get this message spread. So part of Parents Preventing Childhood Drowning is this pamphlet here that we are asking that pediatricians 
display at their office or use as an educational tool to help with ways to prevent drowning. There's pool safety, swim lesson safety, beach safety, and boating safety inside. As for swimming lessons, Jenny says all lessons are helpful but can give a false sense of security. She suggests also looking into survival lessons where children at a very young age learn to roll over in the water and float so they can breathe until help comes or they paddle their way over to a ladder or wall. Where's Errol? Where are you? Jenny finds helping others helps her through her pain. It has also helped her family move on. In the spring of 2017, they had another son, Asher Jackson, who at the age of 20 months went through survival swim lessons. Meanwhile, the heartbreaking lesson learned by Jenny and Adam has prompted a lot of changes in the Bennett home. For my situation, if I would have had an alarm on my door or my door would have been secure, I would have known if Jackson would have gone outside. If I would have had a fence around my pool or a net over my pool, he wouldn't have made it to, in, to the pool. And if he would have had survival swim lessons, he would have been able to save himself. And we would have found him and he'd still be here today. So there were many steps that we had missed that I want to educate others on to prevent this from happening to their child.